All right, in this CAD clip, we're going to show you a couple things about the new um, fabrication parts that are in Revit 2016. Um, and I have kind of the version that has all the different uh, disciplines in it, which most people have nowadays. Um, and I've got the Revit kind of um, MEP duct work and pipes and equipment here. And then I've got the fabrication version over here. So fabrication more geared towards actual pieces and fabrication rather than just big, long, endless uh, runs of duct work and, you know, very generic. That's the thing about that. So let's just grab this Revit uh, traditional duct and piping. Let's isolate those using our new section box tool and then click out. So if we look at this as traditionally what we have in our Revit MEP, we have a VAV unit here and we can click on here and say draw duct and off we go. And as we turn corners, we specify, you know, what type of elbows and T's we want and we change our offset and our elevation. We just basically route the stuff around. But as you can see, although it's very nice to work with, um, and if you stretch this stuff, oh, going the wrong way there. Um, if you stretch it, it all updates, right? Which is really quite nice. So let's uh, try it with a round duct over here. And if we grab that and pull that piece of duct work out, you know, it's going to do that. And then if we click on here and we say, you know, create similar, and then we pick a point on there and we go around a corner nice and straight, it'll put an elbow in there and etc. Now you can't see because it's getting clipped by that section box. However, um, and that's what happened over here too, by the way. So if we, you know, pick on something and we pick on, you know, an edge and we drag it, we can do that. We can split it. And when we take one and we, you know, draw another piece of pipe, it'll attach right to there and off you go. But as you can see, it's still fairly generic what it does. It's not like the real kind of fabrication parts. And then we are using the same equipment. So we, whenever we have our equipment, we can always see we have our different systems. And you can tell by the symbology, hydronic, you know, hot and cold and HVAC in and out and all that good stuff. This is other um, coming in here. So we have a boiler with some pipes and stuff, traditional Revit pipes, traditional Revit ductwork. Okay, so now we'll have a look at the fabrication side of that. Um, so let's just go down here and turn our section box off and we'll isolate these guys here. So I'm going to do a crossing box and grab these guys and I will hit my section box there. So now these are different because they're individual components. If you hover over them, you can see on the status bar down here, it's actually a different category. It's a fabrication parts. Okay, so if you go VV on the keyboard, you can see that um, there's a new category in here called fabrication parts. And you can't do much with them other than turn the center lines on and off and, you know, do the the half tone and then change your colors or turn them off altogether. So it is a new category. And what happens is if we go to our systems tab over here, once you install or get the MSI file that has the database of the parts and Autodesk has a sample one available for us um, and you pick on here and set it up, then when you go in here, you have a different interface because your fabrication parts don't show up over here inside of your families like normal families do and they don't have a system associated to them but they are geared towards making fabrication parts and they have different options and you kind of piece them together one by one you can change it from ductwork rectangular, round, all your different parts inside of here. And then you drag these on and they have little connectors. It's all about the connectors. Okay, so the biggest tip I can give you with fabrication parts is to make sure that under your snaps over here is that you have points turned on. Okay, I probably spent a good two hours playing with this, almost gave up, maybe more than two hours, maybe closer to three or four hours off and on sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't I it all a lot of it came back to making sure that this O snap is turned on SX so that tip right there will save you a bunch of time now the nice thing about fabrication parts is you can use create similar just like you can in Revit so you'll find some similarities with the traditional duct work that are that's inside of here and you'll see some 
you know back and forth between these fabrication guys so I can pick on any one of these and I can say create similar which is always the fastest way in my case it's the shortcut AS so AS on the keyboard and it brings in a um, piece of ductwork and then if I hover around depending on where I am you'll see that guy show up and then as you snap you'll see the notes so if you click on here it'll it'll size it to that if you click it over here it'll size it to that if you click it over there it'll size it to that it won't size it to a, rect a circle or a circular one so if you wanted a circular one you'd go into ductwork round and you'd probably just go up here and say okay I want a piece of straight pipe and then with that that guy will then adapt to the sizes there okay and then you'll from there you can click on here grab these guys use your shift key and then you can change the sizes if you want to draw an elbow in there take an elbow as you bring it in you can use your space bar to rotate it and then once you hit the node and hover it rotates around that which is wonderful thank you very much and then you can also use your up and down arrow key and it looks like it's rotating but what you're doing is you're you're cycling through the different connector points depending on you know some of them have more connector points than others so the key is hover over where you want then you can use your up and down key to cycle through the connector points and then you can use your space bar to rotate and then click and off you go and then you go back and you grab another part and then it's smart enough to snap to there and you grab another part drag over there put it over there so you kind of build it piece by piece and that's how you 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 go in here no different if this guy is not here okay let's get rid of this guy if I pick a piece of rectangular duct okay just a straight piece of duct and go here as I hover over you'll see it'll snap to that point you can click in oh it just happened to be the right size if this wasn't here I could click on here to get rid of that reducer get rid of all this stuff delete okay grab another piece of straight pipe no nah, no I want I want a reducer I go into here and I say okay I want a transition and as I hover it'll snap to that size okay if I don't like the size of that I can click on here go into the properties and change the end size of this then from there I can just pick on here I use this a lot create similar boom pops it on there you want a reducing elbow click on there goes to that okay you can add your connections in you can't split them down the middle and kind of um, tie into it you have to create it part by part you have to literally create it piece by piece now when you have a bunch of segments together you can also go in here hover and tab to click a whole bunch select them then we have this wonderful tool called optimize the lengths and what it'll do then is it'll just basically equalize that out and optimize the length of that run Okay, that also works in, if I pick on over here, that works in a condition like this. Okay, I could click on here and then hover over here and hit tab like in normal Revit and then click. And then once I have that run, I can say optimize my lengths and it'll optimize the lengths of that. So really geared towards fabrication. Okay, pipes are no different. If we go down here, we go back to say piping and I'm gonna go with piping uh, fittings is good and I'll just grab a piece of you know straight pipe so as I draw a piece of pipe it's gonna put a coupling in there for me escape escape as I draw the pipe I can change the size of it to be whatever I want around there 1000 oh I'm outside that section box again uh, let's take the section box off that's causing me anguish here and pipe again let's use this one instead and shift middle mouse oh because there's something on the end of that escape escape i've got two different things going on there and that's not a pipe that's actually a piece of ductwork that's what that problem is uh, however i think this one is a pipe so let's make let's get rid of this guy and let's get rid of this guy do a little bit of cleanup so here's the end of a pipe now if I click on a pipe if I add it on there it'll add that in if I want to put a radius elbow in again you see it adapts to the size use my spacebar click on there draw another piece of pipe 
pick on there and it'll shoot off of there at that whatever angle that I have that escape escape if I pick on any of them it's all about the control points pick the control point first the connector then when you start to drag if okay use your shift key as the key when you want to drag that so if you pick on here and grab this and use your shift key it'll drag always in kind of a straight line okay same as with any of these guys click shift key is your ortho you'll find that otherwise if you just drag it and change the length it will change the length okay so you just basically go in here you grab your parts off of here okay duct work and then you grab your different fitting types okay and these are all databases that you can get and this is a standard metric one that comes off the autodesk knowledge network just search for um, revit fabrication parts msi file you can download that um, and from there it's a matter of you know recreating uh the um the work that we've done here and then once you have a little assembly per se you use your normal revit tool so i'll just use a shift uh, middle mouse now watch i'm going to grab all these guys and i'm going to say create what is an assembly so it's going to create an assembly of that going to give it a name put it in there and then click out and now that is an assembly and that's listed down inside of here so there's my assembly and if i right click and say create views or i can go up into here and say model where is it create views create assembly views right here it should be on the top menu as well all the different views and i can say schedule you know fabrication and so it's going to create a parts list and all that stuff create a sheet I can pick a sheet load a sheet off of there it's going to create all these wonderful views at this scale hit OK and now it's going to create a bunch of views down using our standard Revit assembly tools and then from inside of there I can double click on all these different views elevations sections stuff like that and then of course we have our sheets and we have our schedules with our parts list inside of here we have a material takeoff over here which doesn't have anything yet and then mechanical equipment schedule not much in there and uh, fabrication parts and where's the other one uh, parts list a little bit different so it'll break down all of our parts and stuff for us right inside of here so um, fabrication parts in Revit 2016 um, and creating assemblies and assembly views.